Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about how you can run Keras or TensorFlow models on GPU on Windows. There are basically two ways. First way is to install all your packages under the native Windows operating system. The second way is to install all your packages under the subsystem of Linux under the Windows operating system. So one thing we need to pay attention if we want to use the first option is that TensorFlow 2.10 was the last TensorFlow release that supported GPU on native Windows. Which means that if you have a TensorFlow version that's larger than 2.10 and you want to run that with GPU on Windows, you can only use option number 2. In this video, we will be covering option number one, and we will not be covering option number two. The first place that we need to go is the TensorFlow installation page, which I have included the URL on the left. So let's go to the page. In this page, it basically tells you how you can install TensorFlow with PIP. Let's focus on this section over here. This is basically the section that provides you the commands that you need to enter when you want to install your TensorFlow under different operating systems. So you can see that there are Linux options, Mac options, Windows native options, and Windows WSL2 and others. In our case, the focus is the Windows native, so we will be selecting this tab. As you can see, the first command, we are going to install two packages. One is called CUDA toolkit, another one is called CUDNN. Those two packages basically enable your GPU to run TensorFlow models. We need to pay attention to the version numbers over here because specific TensorFlow versions is only compatible with specific CUDA toolkit version and specific CUDNN version. We will go through the version compatibility in just a minute. The second command prompt is to install TensorFlow with version less than 2.11. We need that because, as I said before, TensorFlow 2.10 was the last TensorFlow release that supports GPU on native Windows. So if you install TensorFlow 2.11, then it will not work. We need TensorFlow version less than 2.11. The third line basically check whether TensorFlow has found a compatible GPU that can be used to run TensorFlow models. Then the next question is, how do we know whether our GPU can be used to run TensorFlow models? So only NVIDIA GPUs car with CUDA architectures of these versions are supported by TensorFlow. If you want to see a list of the CUDA enabled GPU card from NVIDIA, you can click this link which I have included also in my PowerPoint. So let's go to the link. This page lists all the CUDA enabled GPUs, which means that those these GPUs are supported by TensorFlow. So there are different series. There are data center products, Quadro or RTX series. If you play a lot of video games, you are probably familiar with the GE4 series. So in my case, I have a GeForce RTX 980. I believe I got my GPU around 2015. But right now, the latest version is GeForce RTX 4090. Data center products are really the high-end GPUs that are very expensive. Okay, so if you are not sure whether your GPU is supported by TensorFlow, you can come over here, navigate to your series, and then making sure that your GPU is on the list. As I am making this video, I was curious about the GPU prices right now on the market, so I did some research. This slide shows the GPU prices comparisons in 2023. Right now it's already May 2023, but we still got January eBay price and then also the retail price. I have listed all the latest GeForce RTX GPUs and it's very interesting because the 4000 series in January the eBay price is higher than the retail price. I believe there was a shortage in January 
but I also believe that it is not the case now. You can already buy 1490 with 1600 on Amazon.com now. So it gives you an idea about the price for the GPUs. If you have budget, you can buy the latest versions. If you don't have budgets, then you can buy earlier version as well. So my GPU, I checked the price on eBay. It's about $100 pre-owned. You can have my GPU version RTX 980. If you have extra money that you don't know where to spend, you can buy one of those data center grade. I'm just listing the A100 here. A100 has two specifications. One is 80 gigabyte and then an another one is 40 gigabyte. And for the 80 gigabyte, you are looking around $20,000. For the 40 gigabyte, you are looking around $8,000. Now let's talk about the compatibility issues. What Python versions we need to use and then what package versions we need to use. And let's go to this TensorFlow page, which I have included the URL here. The page looks like this, but you don't need to worry about too much on the beginning. Just click on the GPU which is the last section of this page. It will tell you, okay, your Python versions, if you want to use TensorFlow version 2.10, what should your Python version be? And then what should your CUDA version and your CUDA version be? So if you are going to use TensorFlow 2.4, then your Python version needs to be between 2.6 and 2.8. And you need to have CUDA version number 8 and CUDA version number 11. In this tutorial, we are going to use TensorFlow 10. So we, are, we need CUDA version 8.1 and then CUDA version 11.2. And that's pretty much everything we need to know before we want to install TensorFlow in real actions. So in today's demo, I'm going to use these four lines of conduct commands. As you can see, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new environment with Python version 3.10. But if you want to implement it, you don't really need to create a new environment. You can just install your TensorFlow under the base environment if you are already using that. Okay, after I create that, I'm going to activate the TensorFlow in GPU environment and I'm going to install the CUDA toolkit version 11.2 and CUDDNN 8.1. And then lastly, I'm going to use pip install TensorFlow 2.10. So if you are not familiar with working with Anaconda, I created a short tutorial on that and I have included the URL over here. So anyway, the first thing is to open the Anaconda prompt. So just type Anaconda and then select Anaconda prompt. Okay, the first thing is we need to uh, we need to create a new environment, so conda create name tensorflow gpu python version equals to 3.10 yeah. So it will take a while uh, It's asking me do you want to install these new packages I'm going to say yes. Okay, now it is done. We have created a new environment called TensorFlow GPU. But as you can see the parentheses over here, we are still under the base environment. So we need to activate activate TensorFlow GPU. Now we are switched to the TensorFlow GPU environment and we need to start installing the CUDA toolkit and CUDNN packages. So I'm going to use conda install conda forge CUDA toolkit equals to 11.2 and CUDNN equals to 8.1. This might take a while. Okay, right now it is asking me whether I want to update these packages, so I'm going to type yes. Okay, now we are done. 
The last thing is to install TensorFlow. So I'm going to use pip install TensorFlow equals to 2.10. Oh, I made a mistake. So pip install TensorFlow 2.10. Oh, I need. Okay, sorry. Pip install TensorFlow equal equal 2.10 Okay, now that everything is done, let's start running a example Jupyter notebook and then see what's the computation time with and without GPU. To do that, let's open Anaconda Navigator. Okay, first thing is that we need to switch from the base environment to the new environment that we just created, which is the TensorFlow GPU. Okay, after it is done, we need to launch Jupyter Notebook, but because this is a brand new environment, the Jupyter Notebook has not been installed yet, so we need to install that as well. Okay, it is now installed, so let's launch the Jupyter Notebook. And we can just open a example notebook, which I have prepared. It's a, it's a TensorFlow models that I'm training on the MNIST dataset. <clears throat> so the MNIST dataset is basically a image classifications where your input data is a 28 by 28 pixels of digit from 0 to 9. And then your output is basically the corresponding digit. I'm not going to too much details on the MNIST dataset in these videos. Uh, the whole purpose is just to see what's the computation time with and without the GPU support. So if you want to see whether your GPU has been identified by the TensorFlow, you can type this command tf.config.list physical devices. So the TensorFlow is detecting me that I'm having a CPU, but I'm also having a GPU. Okay, let's now run everything. Uh, this is basically my model. It's just a very simple model. Because the input images has 28 by 28 pixels, I'm going to flatten it so that it becomes just a vector with 784 elements. And then I'm having five fully connected network with 522, I mean 512 hidden neurons. And then the last layer has to has 10 output because we have 10 digits starting from zero to nine. And then activation is softmax. The loss function is categorical cross entropy. Okay, let's run the model with only five epoch and then see how long does it take to run the model. As you can see, it takes about 13.9 seconds to train the model with five epochs. Now let's restart the kernel, but this time we are going to add this one more line, which will set the feasible device of GPU equals to an empty list. If we do that, then the TensorFlow will not use the GPU to run our model. Instead, you will use the CPU because the GPU is set to non-feasible to the TensorFlow. Okay, let's now see what's the computation time with CPU. As you can already see, it takes much longer. Okay, it takes about 31.2 seconds compared to GPU, which is 13 seconds. We are more than double faster if we want to, if we want to run on GPU. So the amount of improvement really depends on the project that you are working on. This is probably a simpler model, so the improvement is not that obvious. In some of my projects, the improvement can be greater than 20 times. 
So if I'm using my RTX 980 GPU, compared to CPU, the computation time can be reduced to only 5% of the original time. One last thing I want to mention is that if you run into memory issues when using Jupyter Notebook, then just convert your code into a Python file and run it with Spider or other Python IDE. So I have some projects where it's more, much more complex, but I don't have any issues when running with CPU, but I run into memory issues when running with GPU uh, on Jupyter Notebook. In that case, when I convert my code to a Python file, and then run it with spider in work in my case. So if you run into this issue, just make sure that try convert your code into a Python file and see if that helps. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, let me know if you have more questions. Otherwise, I will see you in my next video.